What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how to use the homebrew store to download your own package files served from your computer. So you can basically take any package files that you have on your computer and serve them to the homebrew store so that the homebrew store can download them directly to your PS4. So this is an alternative to using something like the remote package installer or internal package installer to install package files remotely. You can actually use this kind of second feature in the homebrew store to do it instead. And uh, yeah, it has a lot of different advantages. So it was a bit complicated to set up before, which is why I didn't cover it when I was initially saying on Twitter that I was going to. But Lightning Mods and I have kind of worked on this program. This mainly Lightning Mods who's created this program. I've just kind of helped kind of streamline it and make it uh, kind of more user friendly. But uh, we've worked on this program that can allow you to essentially just point the program at any folder on your computer that has package files in it and it will host them for the homebrew store so that they, they will appear in the homebrew store and you can download them directly to your ps4 from the homebrew store so yeah it's pretty awesome stuff i'm going to show you guys how to get it set up right here we're basically just creating our own content delivery network or cdn that we can you know use on the homebrew store to download our own package files so if we switch on over to the computer, first things first, install the homebrew store if you don't already have it. So head to packagezone.com and download the homebrew store right here. Once you have the package file, obviously just pop it on a USB drive on the root of a USB drive. Don't put it inside any folders. And again, make sure the USB drive is formatted in XFAT or FAT32 format. Then you can unplug that USB drive and plug it into your PS4. Okay, and once we're on the PS4, we're then going to obviously run the internet browser, load up your exploit page, whichever one you're using, like caro218.ir, and then run the gold hen payload to jailbreak your PS4. Once you have your PS4 jailbroken, you can then go into settings, go down to the debug settings, game and package installer, and then install the homebrew store to your PS4. So there we go. That's how you get the homebrew store up and running. Okay, so now that you have the homebrew store installed, we're going to switch back over to the computer here. The next thing we need to do is download the tool. Okay, so firstly, you want to go to the releases section and download the actual tool right here. So store CDN tool.zip, click that and download it. Then from there, you're also going to need to get the latest updates as well. So what we're going to do is go down to the important section here, tool directions and then go to latest store update here. And that will take you to the latest version of the store. So download the top one. So you want the homebrew.elf file, download that, download homebrew.elf.sig and also download remote.md5. Download all three of those. So once you have all four of those files downloaded, open up the store CDN tool and we're going to create a new folder here on the desktop called homebrew store tool or something like that. And then we're just going to extract all of these files into that folder. And then you're going to open the folder and inside we want to create an update folder. So just create an update folder in here. And you want to copy these three files that we downloaded for the update into that update folder. And that gets you the latest update ready so that when you actually run the server.exe, it will be able to serve that update to the homebrew store. So you need to make sure that the store is always updated to the latest version. So that's a vital step to make sure that you have the thing actually updated so it's going to work. So then you can run the store CDN server.exe to actually run the tool. And from here, all we need to do is select our computer's IP address. So I'll just select it from the drop down menu. This will give you all the IP addresses from all the different network adapters on your computer. So just select your IP address for your computer. If you don't know what the IP address is, of course, you can just go to CMD command prompt and type in IP config. And then that gives you all the different IP addresses here. So again, select the IP address for your computer into the IP box. So then you just need to enter the path to the directory that contains the package files. So any folder on your computer or even a whole hard drive, you can just select a hard drive and you know it will host all the package files on that hard drive. So for example, I'm going to use my J downloader folder. I'm just going to paste in the file path to my J downloader folder, which is where most of my package files are. And uh, obviously you can click the three dots to browse for a folder or drag and drop a folder in and then you should be good. Once you've selected your folder, you just hit add packages and it will scan all the different package files in that directory and add them uh, to the database. So as you can see, it found 14 valid package files of 22. The reason why eight of them are 
being ignored is because they're not valid package files, which means they might be, you know, just some other file that has a .pkg extension or another file that's maybe it's a PS3 package file or maybe it's a PS4 update that's split into multiple four gigabyte chunks. Uh, those are not valid. So those are the kind of package files that will be ignored. But all the valid ones, fake package files, retail package files, you know, whether it's a game, an update, a DLC, you know, or a homebrew app or an emulator, they should all be valid and are now available to host on the homebrew store. So all you need to do is start the server once you're done by hitting start stop web server, allowing access on your firewall, of course, and then you are good to go. So, so from here, we can just switch back over to our PS4 and run the homebrew store. So what you'll notice when you first load the homebrew store is that it is the normal homebrew store right now, not our package files from our computer. So to change that, we just head down to the settings and we can change the content delivery network. And you want to change this to the IP address from the program. So the IP address you selected in the program, which should be the IP address of your computer. So you're just going to enter that in here. So that's going to be 137.1 in my case. And that's the IP address of my computer. So we pop that in. Okay, so once you've entered that IP address, there's two ways of doing this. You can do this with a USB drive or you can do this without a USB drive. Now, there's advantages and disadvantages to both. So if you do this on the USB drive, that basically means that you're saving the settings file to the USB drive. And the advantage of that is that it will have two settings files, one on the hard drive and one on the USB drive. So you can have the normal default settings for the homebrew store on the hard drive and the you know modified settings with your modified content delivery network from your computer. You can have that stored on a separate configuration file on the USB. And the advantage of this is that whenever you want to go back to the normal homebrew store, you can just unplug the USB drive and it will use the normal default configuration file on the hard drive. So you can switch back and forth between the normal store and downloading your own package files just by plugging in and unplugging a USB drive. So that's the advantage of using the USB method. The, and to do that, by the way, you just change the INI path here and you change it to the same path that's down there in the bottom left hand corner. You can see under storage, it says MNT slash USB zero. That's the USB drive. So if you want to have it like that, uh, where the settings file, the custom settings file is on the USB drive, then you can just change the file path here to MNT forward slash USB zero forward slash settings dot INI. And then you just hit done and then you're good to go. Then you can save settings and then that custom configuration file will be stored on the USB drive. So that's one way to do it. Just unplug the USB drive, you get the normal store, plug in the USB drive, you get the store that tries to download your own package files. So yeah, you can do it that way if you want, or you can, if you don't like using a USB drive, because the disadvantage to that, obviously, with the USB method is that you have to have a USB drive. So to do it without a USB drive, you just leave the normal INI path on the hard drive and hit save settings, which is what I'm going to do. And uh, that should be fine. So in this version of the homebrew store, when I hit save settings, it, it does kind of change the content delivery network back to normal, but it has actually changed it to the the IP address that we put in there. Um, so the only disadvantage of using the hard drive method is that it's a bit more, you know, complicated to have to switch back to the normal homebrew store because whenever you want to go back to the normal homebrew store again, you have to run the server and then load up the homebrew store, get into the settings menu here and change the content delivery network back to normal, which is api.package-zone.com and then hit save settings. And then that'll put you back to the normal homebrew store or you can just reinstall the homebrew store again. That's another way of doing it. And that'll put it back to the default settings. So that's the only thing if you're doing it with the hard drive method, it's a bit more complicated to switch back. Whereas, you know, with the USB method, you can just unplug the USB drive and it's back to normal. But uh, yeah, anyway, I'm just going to leave it like this, doing it from the hard drive. And all we have to do is hit the options button to close the homebrew store and then reopen it to load those new settings that we put in. And if we switch back over to the computer here, you can see that it is actually starting to serve these files to the homebrew store. So it says last file served remote.md5. If I click OK, it will start serving the update file. And there we go. Updates been applied. And then it should serve store.db. Then we'll switch back over here to the PS4. And there we go. As you can see, we now have access to all of the package files from that folder, you can see 14 items, as it said on the tool, 14 package files ready to be hosted. 
And here they are. We've got full games, ga modded game updates and stuff. I don't know why that Fallout 4 has a custom icon there, but uh, yeah, it just works. So anyway, we can go to Minecraft, for example, hit download. And as you can see, that will download it directly to our PS4. And then we can hit install and that will install it to the PS4. Which again, only takes a few seconds. And there we go. We now have Minecraft installed and ready to use. So again, you can have multiple pages of loads of different package files that you might have on your computer that you can download. And again, you can switch this to any other folder that you want or an entire hard drive. So for example, all I have to do if I switch back over to the computer, I can host another folder. For example, I can just stop the web server, change this directory to a different folder on my computer, like the another downloads directory on another hard drive, hit add package files. And that again will clear the database and add, you know, all the package files that it finds in this folder to the um to the database and there we go so you can see 92 valid package files of 105 in this folder don't know there's probably lots of old package files from previous videos in this folder that i never deleted so then i can just start the server again then switch back over to the ps4 and close the homebrew store with options button load it back up again and now i have a different set of package files that i could download right here as you can see and you can see there's seven pages 92 items so, you know, I could download any one of these other package files right here and it should work just fine. So, yeah, that is kind of the advantage right there of using this kind of homebrew store in order to be able to download your package files. OK, so before I end the video, I do want to show you guys how to get faster download speeds with a wired connection, because, you know, on wireless, you can do this on wireless. It will work. But it's the same with anything you try and do on wireless when installing package files over the network, whether you're doing it through FTP or with the remote package installer, wireless is just painfully slow. Unless you're doing small package files like homebrew apps, emulators, you know, games like Minecraft that are only a few hundred megabytes, then sure, you can do that over Wi-Fi and it won't take too long. But if you're trans trying to transfer like a 20, 40, 60 gigabyte file, like 60 gigabyte game or something over wireless, it's going to take hours and hours. Whereas over, you know, wired, it might only take 20 minutes or something or 15 minutes. You know, I would highly recommend setting up a wired connection if you can. And I'm going to show you guys how I do my wired setup because my router is not in the same room as my computer or PS4, but I can still do a wired connection. So I'm just going to show you guys how to get that set up. So in order to set up a wired connection, what I do is I have an Ethernet cable and I plug one end of the Ethernet cable into my computer, into the computer's Ethernet port and the other end of the Ethernet cable into the PS4's Ethernet port. So we're directly connecting the PS4 and the computer together with one network cable. And then from there, all we have to do is go down to the taskbar, right click on your connections here and go to open network and internet settings and then change adapter options. And if your Windows 10 is bugged out like mine, then I guess you can select uh, network and sharing center instead and then go to change adapter settings up here, which will take you to the same place. So from here, you just want to select your wireless adapter or the adapter that's providing your computer with the internet connection from your router, right click on it and go to properties and then go to sharing and then check the box to allow other network users to connect through this computer's internet connection. And then if you don't have a drop down menu like this, just click OK and it will automatically share it with the ethernet adapter, the adapter the PS4 is plugged into. Um, if you do have a drop down menu, then it's because you have multiple network adapters here like me. So you need to specify which one to share the connection with, in which case it's going to be the Ethernet adapter, because that is the again, the adapter that the PS4's Ethernet cable is plugged into. So we're going to click OK. And then that will basically just share the Internet connection that the computer is getting down the network cable to the PS4 so the PS4 can get Internet. But also because it's a direct connection, even though my computer is connected to the router with a wireless connection, whenever I transfer files from the computer to the PS4, it's just going directly down the network cable to the PS4. So I'm getting those really high speeds. So that's how I do the kind of network connection. Some people have issues with, uh, you know, connection sharing. If you do have problems with connection sharing, you can use a network bridge instead where you select both adapters and you right click and you bridge the connections. Um, and you have to add both adapters to a network bridge. That works for some people. For me, network bridges are more unreliable than connection sharing. But, you know, I've heard from other people that they have more success with network bridges compared to connection sharing. So whichever one works best for you, just do that and then you should be good. So 
So with that set up, if we switch back over to the PS4, we can go onto the settings, go to network and set up an internet connection and make sure you use a LAN cable because again, we're connecting our PS4 to our computer with the ethernet cable. So it's a LAN cable connection we set up. And then we just do, you know, a custom setup, automatic IP, do not specify DHCP, manual DNS to enter your DNS addresses to block Sony servers uh, if you want to. And then automatic MTU, do not specify proxy, and you are good to go. So if we look at our IP address here, you can see that we have a valid IP. And that's basically how you set up your wired connection. So if I switch back over to the computer one more time, this time I'm just going to put on uh, G colon backslash. I'm just going to do the whole hard drive this time just to show that you can host an entire hard drive instead of specifying a folder. So there we go. We're adding all the package files, 31 package files in this drive. And then we can start the server in that hard drive, bring up our homebrew store again. And as you can see, we now have a few more package files here that we can download. So yeah, let's do PT for example. I believe this is actually a retail version of PT, so it's not actually runnable. Um, I do have the fake package version somewhere, but uh, this is what, 1.26 gigabytes. So we'll hit download and you can see it doesn't take too long because again, we're on a wired connection. Now it's still not as fast. I mean, we tried to get it as fast as possible, but it's not quite as fast as, you know, transferring over FTP on a wired connection. Um, you know, it may be sort of similar to remote package installer speeds. So there you go. There's your one gigabyte, 1.2 gigabyte file installed, as you can see right there. It just takes a few seconds to finalize the install. And then we should be good. There we go. Done. So yeah, as you can see, it works absolutely fine. Again, let's do a full game this time. Let's do Resident Evil 3, for example. This is 20 gigabytes. So yeah, just while this is downloading, I definitely think this is a great way of being able to remotely install your package files. It's a good alternative to the remote package installer, which I've had issues with on 9.00. I've heard reports from other people about similar issues where, you know, the speed starts off fast and then drops off for some reason. Not entirely sure why that happens. Maybe somebody knows a fix for it. But um, because of that issue, I haven't really been using the remote package installer that often. Uh, there's the internal package installer where you can manually copy package files to the data folder on your hard drive with FTP and then install it. But then you have to manually delete the original package from the data folder once you're done, which isn't super convenient and it has to be done one by one. So I think this is probably one of the best ways to do it, to be honest, because again, you just point the program at a folder that has your package files in it. It can be your normal download directory where you download most of your package files to anyway. And you can just host the server in there and then you run the homebrew store and then there's all the package files there from your downloads folder on your computer and you can just download each one one by one and again it can be full games you know fake package games updates dlc you know homebrew uh, apps and emulators all that kind of stuff ps1 ps2 packages all right there we go so we're at 99 percent and we're done so now we can install the game so there is a, some disadvantages to this, obviously, like the fact that you have to download it and then install it separately. Uh, whereas obviously with the remote package installer, it kind of downloads and installs at the same time. So it's kind of installing at the same time as it's downloading. So that is an advantage to the remote package installer. But again, I have had issues with the remote package installer lately. So this is a good alternative to that right now. All right, so just skip forward. Here we are 99%. It's now installed ready to use Resident Evil 3 will launch it just to be sure that you know it's all working not that it wouldn't you know if it says it's installed it's installed so we should be good and there we go as you can see game is running no problem I don't know why I keep using Resident Evil 3 recently in videos but uh, let's try Minecraft as well that we installed earlier and as you can see it's launched and working as well so yeah, that's basically it. Another awesome alternative way of installing your own package files using, you know, a program that you probably already have anyway, hopefully, the homebrew store. And again, all download links and everything will be down in the video description. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.